Hello, my name is Marcus and welcome to a completely very nice and clean table. Just take that up. Yeah, we've had a birthday party for me recently actually, so it's, it's nice and clean today. But <clears throat> that's not why we're here. The reason we're here is of course for another tabletop reviews and another ticket to ride game. This time it's San Francisco. Yes, I didn't manage to get it at Essen Spiel like I wanted to, but then like two days after making my video about it, I found it in a local Danish store and I was like, do I, do I not? Well, I did. So, another small box game. I thought I've reviewed the two other small box games that I have, and I thought it was only natural to review this one before I got into the other expansions. And once I get along done, I will also review that one at, at the end of the cycle. But for now, we've got to concentrate and get some of the other teacher rides reviewed. But let's start with this one. Of course, of course, it is now on Mondays. Mondays is going to be teach to ride for a little while, uh, just trying to catch up, I've missed I think three Wednesdays now of uploading, so trying to catch up with doing this on Mondays and then regular games on Wednesdays, moving along a little bit <coughs> with some pace, shouldn't be take that much, anyways, hit the table, let's set it up, let's play some teach to ride. Alright, let's set up past San Francisco, like with every other Ticket to ride, there is a little central board here which you will grab and place down and bam. Then we'll choose the colors. I will choose the two somewhat distinct colors, purple and pink here. And we will of course get a little bag of trams to go with that. Alright, let's do the player set up continues here. You have the All of these uh, cards here, the colored cards that we have in every other ticket to ride. I can't remember, I think they call it train cards in most of those. I think these are like travel cards or something. Each player will get two to start off with, and then in a pile up here, you'll flip over five. It should be face up. There we go. Then we'll shuffle up the uh, Root cards, or whatever you want to call them, root cards, yes. Each player will get two only, and of course we'll choose a minimum of one to keep, but you can keep both of them. And yeah, If you choose to keep one out, it will be put at the bottom of the pile, otherwise we'll just keep them. So, <clears throat> last little bit of setup. You have all these small tokens here, cutouts. There are three of each. Now in a two-player game like this one, You'll grab two of them and place on all the ones that are red. Can you see it? Let me zoom in on the board here, just the corner. So you can see this one's red, this one is blue. Of the red ones, there are five on the board, and you place two of these little small round ones. This is the pink one on those because it is a two player game. In a three-player game, you will also place down two, and only in a four-player game will you place down all three of them. And just in a second, you will notice, you'll probably notice something. Yes, in fact, there are two colors left after my random distribution. Now, let's say pink stops. That means that purple get to choose what take one from each of the remaining colors and decide where to place them on the board. So let's look at purple's roots here. You wanna place them somewhere that they need. So let's see Lombard Street they need. And Night Height Ashbury they need. So place them very to your root, hoping that the other player here doesn't get them. Now, on your turn, there are, of course, two things you can... No, three things, sorry, that you can do. First thing is, you can take... Let me just zoom out so you can see it again here. Beam. From the cards. You can take two. So you can draw two of these face-up ones. Maybe the two purple ones. Maybe the black and the one, you know, however. Or draw two from the top of the pile. And one of them is this one. Normally it's a locomotive cart, and this one it is a steamboat cart. 
and this multicolor counts for colors, you can only grab one if it is face up. If you're lucky enough to draw one, which I wasn't, <coughs> you can you get to keep it and still draw another one even if it's the top card. But when it's face up, you only get to take that one. <coughs> Next thing is, you can of course place down your trams. So, for example, we use this one purple one here, and we'll place down a train right here. All right. Now in this one, two things will happen when you place this one down. The first is you get points for how many trains. One, two, three, or five. Big one here. One train gives you one point, so pink will receive one point. Now then, you also get to grab one of these ones, because you're touching it. Uh, it goes right there, you have that now. You're not allowed to take a second one, so if you do the green one, you're not allowed to take the second one of these. But you now have one of them, which are points at the end. All right, and the third and final thing you can do in your turn is, of course, draw two new road cards and keep a minimum for one of them. So that's what you can do in your turn. You finish up the game when someone has only two trams left, or less, of course, one or zero of the counts. And then that's the last round. That person just took their last round, now it's Purple's turn to take their last round, and then the game ends. And of course, there are three scoring categories. The first one is the trains you place down, you score those along the game, and then you have your routes. If you completed a route, or we'll completed this one, for example, I would get five points. One, two, three, four, five. But if I didn't complete this one, I'd get minus three. One, two, three. And then these ones, these little tourist markers, are also shown over here. So here you have zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get for zero one, you get zero points. For two, you get one point. For three, you get two points. For four, you get four points. For five, you get six points. For six, you get nine points. For seven, you get twelve points. You will add those two your total score, and then whoever has the most amount of points is the winner. That is setup and gameplay, very simple. And there we have the setup of Ticket Ride San Francisco. So let's talk about the gameplay real, real quick, going over the gameplay. It is the same every other Ticket Ride, except for it, it's small change. What the hell is the clock you have found? Hold on one second. If you want to know every time you drop a small little thing, get yourself a cat. They will find it and they will play with it to annoy you. Anyways, uh, the small change in this one is of course the, what you want to call it, sightseeing, whatever, where you get a little uh, token if you visit it, a special part of the track. Reminds you a little bit of uh, Pennsylvania, where you get in a stock in a, in, a, um, in a company every time you visit certain uh, tracks, except in this one in, in Pennsylvania, it's the tracks themselves, something like that, that. In this one, it's it's like the parts of the city that can give you one. Uh, it's all it's, it's very interesting. Um, there's there's very few in it, and I think Pennsylvania did it a lot better in like try and get majority of these companies and stuff. On this one, obviously, um, just kind of get one and you get a bonus for that, and there is. Enough, enough, enough for every player, and yeah, I don't think that fitted a small box game like this that much. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I would have loved to seen have seen it done differently. You know, the the New York one did the thing where you get an extra bonus for for certain tourist attractions. This one. I don't know if it's tourist attractions. I don't know enough about San Francisco to say that. But it's just this thing about, you know, like in Pennsylvania, we get the most of This one is just get one and you get a bonus. And when there isn't enough for every player, then all of a sudden it does become this thing about getting them first, but you don't get an advantage for getting them first or second. It's just you get them. Um, and it, it will make an interesting one if you're standing at a red destination and a blue destination and one, and like, which one am I going to choose? It's funny, you choose the red one next time. Red and blue, no interesting choice, you're going to get the blue one. Uh, so I don't think it worked totally well on this small box game here, but otherwise the gameplay is still ticked right and it's just a different scoring opportunity and I do love these small box games still. So, 
The gameplay is, is perfectly fine, I just don't think it worked that terribly well. A small box game, but otherwise it's still take it right, still a lot to love. Components wise, <coughs> well it's the same components as always, this time you're doing you're using trams or whatever you want to call them. I'm opening the box for one of our first time ever in one of these, I think. These little tram things, yeah, trams, whatever. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word for it. Um, I don't know why I opened the box. Anyways, trams, things, they're nice, very nice. I like, like these small box games because they print something different with the plastic bits and showcasing. And it's not just train cars that can do really well, they can do other things really well. And use this one, taxis or carts from Amsterdam. I don't know what it is going to be in London, I imagine it's going to be buses, but... And trams, and, and showcasing that those things really work. The board is, is still, I think, takes right, as I say, it's the series of the best central boards. And they continue that in here, my personal opinion. The cards are small cards, but as always, the card quality is good, it's just the size of them. It makes sense for this one, but I just I hate small cards, because I have two big hands. And then you have cardboard cutout. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time there's cardboard cutout in a Ticket to Ride game. I haven't played all of them, I will admit. Um, I haven't played France and Old West, I haven't played um, uh, the new Northern Lights, I haven't played London, I haven't played Poland, that's... Germany. Yeah, anyways, as far as I know, this is the only time that they use cardboard cord out. It's at least the first time I've played cardboard cord out, and I think they did it perfectly fine. Um, cardboard cord out, I think, can be done good, or it can be done bad. I don't think they can be done great, I don't think they can be done terribly. Well, maybe they can be done terribly, but I don't think you're gonna hit great. But these guys, this one hits good, they pop out and they have the. the, 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 the not the coloring, yeah, well, they have the color, but I also have the artwork on it, the, the fish or whatever, uh, to be very simple and very useful, quickly see what it is, very distinguishable, they do what they need to do, they're a good component, so components, as always, is just top-notch, from Ticket to the Ticket Ride series, from Ellen and Amazon, from Days of Wonder, they probably the ones that need the, the real um, the compliment from this one, the, 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 uh, the components is probably the wonder, as I say. Um, <clears throat> so the theme, the theme. As always with these small ones, I struggle with the theme because this, because they show that it, you know, take drive maybe not need the, the the train one, but at the same time with the small one, this one working the size, it's it's the same one as the last couple of views. The theme goes through uh, you're traveling around San Francisco, San Francisco, these trams and visiting some places in San Francisco that probably makes sense, as I know, as I say, I don't know enough about San Francisco to know if this makes a lot of sense, but I imagine that it does. Um, also, a bit of travel in the 80s, right? I, I believe it's set in the 80s. I'm at least getting that vibe just from the cover and from some of the artwork. The fat trams themselves. I might be wrong, of course, but that's just kind of the feel that I get, 80s-ish. Maybe I'm just weird. But yeah, the theme, it, it, it does go through, but also proving that Take It Right can have any theme. So it's, it's a weird one, right? But, um, but what is my final score? Well, my final score, I think it's been an 8 for all these small box games. I'm just going to keep this one in the 8 uh, theme. It's going to stay in the, with the 8. I don't see any reason. That the, the cardboard cutouts, it's assembling them, as I say, is, it doesn't over the work for me, but the ticket to ride is strong enough to make it an 8 still. Because it's still funny, it's still interesting, you're still trying to be the first one to grab them, not the last one. I just need something for 2 and 3 players that give you an incentive to collect them more. Because um, the only thing is take that element, you know, I'm making sure you don't get it. Um, otherwise, it's perfectly fine. Extra score opportunity. This maybe this would have just worked as just base to right, but in a small box. Maybe that would have been a bit better, but it's still fine. It's still an eight, still to right. I'm still keeping it, uh, obviously, because I want uh, to keep all the to rights. I've missed. I've skipped a step. I've skipped. Does it lie to you? My favorite part, because I just love saying, does it lie to you? I don't know. I find it funny, but I don't think you do. Does let you. Uh, two to four players, eight and up, ten and fifteen minutes. The same as always. Two to four, there are components up to four players within the box. You can't really get any more currently for the trams. So yeah, two to four, eight and up. It's the same as, as every other. Did I just 
but okay, it's just some as you know, erotic, dry, erotic game, I say. 10, maybe 8, 8 is fine. This is not that complicated, I think it is perfectly fine. In 10 to 15 minutes, that's the entire point of these small box games, is to be just 10, 15 minutes long. Yes. If you know the rules of Take It Right, you don't really need to learn anything new, you just need to know, land on the red, if you land on the red one, you get a red one. Perfect fine, let's get moving. And then it's 10 to 15 minutes. So, okay, that was all out of the way. Does it like you was the end this time? That's how it goes sometimes. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. <coughs> and listen to me talk about Take It Right San Francisco. Another great Take It Right game from the age of Wonderland and our balloon. Just continuing to make these series. I've heard none of them lights just released. I thought that was until not until next year. But it's continuing to be great. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.